we will be using a software that is called the Rware Studio software to create our rhinestone design. So go ahead and double click on Rware Studio. Once this is launched, we need to select a new project. You can click on the new button right here. We are going to make the width in the working size window that pops up. We're going to make that 10 inches and the length 6 and then click OK. A screen with a grid will pop up and we need to hit the fit button in your toolbar window to help it fit to screen. So go ahead and click that. Our page should now look like this with the grid just filling inside the green workspace area and remember that you will be using two lines of text one for your partner and one for yourself. We need to select the text tool in this area to type our selected text. Then we're going to type in our first text. This is simply we'll choose anywhere in this open space and select the text that you're going to choose and type the text. For mine I'm going to do Avery. Now remember if you're going to do more than eight letters you need to ask your instructor for permission to do so. In order to start the next line of text we want to separate the two. We want two different items here so we don't want to just we do not want to hit enter. We want to deselect this area. So if I click the pointer tool, that'll be changed. And then I'm going to go back to text and I'm going to enter right here and type in my second text. Next, we're going to resize your text. Do this with the pointer tool and you can grab one of the boxes and change the size. It's important to note that you do not be that perfect with this right now because when you select your font choices this will change a lot and so I'm not going to be that perfect I'm not going to worry about taking up all the space right now I'm just going to expand it remember you want to do about half and half bottom three inches for yourself top three inches for your partner Next, we have to change our font into a single line script. And the way we do this is we need to select one of our lines of text. I'm going to select the top one here. Go up here to Format. Find Format. Down to Properties. Select Properties. Then you're going to have this font is what we're looking for right here and you want to select the down arrow and you'll notice that there's many many fonts it's important to note that a lot of these fonts will look the same when we convert it to a single line font and these are unusable in the form they are right now you need to take this bar move up to the front these fonts are the fonts that have been selected for you and have been altered into the form that are usable so they can be changed in rhinestone format so you need to find one and select it and you can see a preview if you just take your up and down arrows you can pick a font make sure you use the ones that have this yellow icon off to the side here once you have found one go ahead and click OK. Then you must do the same for the bottom text. Select, Activate the bottom text by selecting it on the text line. Again come up to Format, Properties, and select the font. Take the scroll, scroll bar up again and select the font that the other would like and then click OK. Once you have both fonts selected, we need to resize them because now they are going to hold their size. You can take these arrows and move them so they fill out the grid as 
big as you want. Remember, this is 10 inches wide, so if you want it less than 10 inches, you can make this a little smaller. For Avery, I'm going to go about 8 inches. Adiella, I'm going to go a little bigger. And we want them to have a space between here. So if these two are almost touching, we can't have these touching, so make sure there's a different space. So go ahead and pause your video and resize your designs. The next step is we need to activate the rhinestone from the toolbar. So up here we have this rhinestone icon. Go ahead and click on the rhinestone window. The next step, um, just to make this fit a little better, I'm going to click the fit to screen button one more time. And over here in this color, drop down arrow, we need to select transparent. We're going to be using transparent rhinestones. Diameter, this is very important. Diameter, we want to go 2.5 to 3 millimeters. Select that. Type, hotfix. Not hotfix transparent, but hotfix. And that's what we'll do. Next step is we have two choices here. And the difference is the size. Our stones are SS10. So select that button. The first step to changing our text into rhinestone patterns is we want to select one text so the arrows are around it and come over here and this icon that says arrange rearrange select that text and you'll see that the font turns to many little circles which is our rhinestone pattern so then of course select your bottom text hit arrange rearrange and change both sets of text to rhinestones. The steps we need to take next is we want to be able to move stones, delete stones, and add stones. And you can check certain areas by taking your mouse and holding it over there you want to look at and use your roller and zoom in on it. So you can see in this eye I'm going to adjust this. So first you need to select the font you want to change, the text. So I'm going to select Adiella down here and zoom in. Then over here you need to hit release and you'll know that you're able to change it because this black line will come in. So go ahead and hit release. Now I'm going to show you how to add a stone. If you want to add a stone you could drag one from over here and drop. And then you could drop, I'd drop it in an open area and if you wanted, bring it over and release, drag and release. That's how you'd add a stone. Next, I'm going to show you how to delete a stone. So if you wanted to delete this stone, I'm going to delete this same stone here for an example. So I need to select it, and I'll know I've selected it by knowing the black boxes around it. Don't move it until you know you have selected it. Then I'm just going to hit the delete key, and that stone is deleted. The most difficult step is moving stones. And at the top of the D in Adiella, we can see these two stones are kind of wide. So I'm going to move them in. You want to make sure your text is selected by having these boxes around it. Then click on the stone, and you'll know you have it selected, the stone only, when you see the four black boxes. That's step one. Step two is then moving the stone. And when you pass your mouse over the stone, you want to look for these crosshairs, then you know you can move it with the four arrows. Once you have it selected, the hardest thing is to understand when you're able to move the stone. When your mouse is actually over this black line behind the dot, it changes into this mouse icon. And then you're not going to move the stone, you're going to move the black lines. You want to float it till you see these arrows, which that, act that indicates being able to move the stone. Then you can drag, and I'm going to drag it in a little closer and then select off. I'm going to move this one again so select it and look for those crosshairs then move it over. Changing mistakes. If you think you've selected the stone but you accidentally grab in this situation from behind and let's say you accidentally move the black lines behind here the way you need to just 
change it is quickly edit undo those steps if you go too far you can redo that's the best way to undo mistakes because moving stones can be tricky so if you make a mistake that would be the best way to change it go ahead and take a look at your design and move any stones that you think need to be moved delete them um, and then check with your instructor if you feel like you have a question mark on some stones whether you want them added or moved after you're done with adjusting your stone alignment you need to save your project we're going to go file save as and we need to find the C drive click this arrow here and find local desk computer C drive double click home your mod and change the file name to your folder number so if you and your partner have the folder number of 1205 and then 128 make sure you put that in there and click save and then close Darware Studio and log off and that concludes day one.